Hey, DIY Mississippi Film Works. What's going on, everybody? Hadn't been in any shows. Hadn't been in any shows, really. The only one I know of within my area, within a quick driving, um, got canceled because there was a escape convict in the area the same day, and he got caught like an hour after the show would have started. But I should be going to one. I need to put this up here real quick. I should be going to one about the middle of July. Looks like, but. So I got a book review. I finally finished this. I loaned this out right after I got this. I loaned this out to Big Country Tommy Moore because I got a shit pile of wrestling books all in at once. I'm like, I can't read. You know, I try not to read more than two books at once. I had like four. So I gave him a handful. He read and he's like, man, this thing was amazing. This is The Grappler. Memoirs of a Mass Man. Lynn, The Grappler, Denton, and John. Vit Hayathil. Vit Hayathil. by Rowdy Roddy Piper. All right, The Grappler. That's him right there. I knew him just from... His Mid-South run, when he was, what, North American champion, if I remember right, with the loaded boot. And that was about it. I think I remember seeing him in, like, world class, but that was it. And I never realized, you know, for years that Lynn, you know, until, hell, probably whenever I got online in 97, that Lynn Denton and, you know, the Dirty White Boy from the Dirty White Boys tag team, because there used to be two of them, it was Tony Anthony and Lynn Denton, was the fucking grapplers. I never realized that Tony Anthony was grappling number two for the longest time, but this guy worked every fucking where, pretty much. Um, from Texas, started off in wrestling, and just never really got over big, and then out of nowhere, um, God, what is his name? He's work, he was working for, like, the Georgia, Carolina, Georgia or Crockett's? I'm trying to think what the guy's name is now. This guy was an amateur star and he'd rather wrestle with a mask. He's like, man, he goes, call yourself the grappler. Beat me if you can. And the guy just, he, Lynn took it and ran with it and became a huge star. And he did loaded boot thing where he had, he got hurt. His knee got attacked and his knee got hurt. I'm trying to remember, I think it was Ted DiBiase. This is Mid-South. So he came back with a boot that had like a built up heel. Well, supposedly if he took his foot and tapped the toe of that boot down three times, it would shift the weight from the heel to the toe. This is wrestling logic, y'all. That he'd run up and like kick the shit out of people and just knock them the fuck out. It was great. I remember seeing this as a kid. This was, what, 80 through about 83, I'm guessing, or 81 through 84. It was when it was Mid-South, not UWF. And I love the hell out of it because I'm like, oh, I want to see somebody beat this guy's ass. Because what it was at the time was Junkyard Dog was their biggest attraction. But even at his peak, Junkyard Dog couldn't do over maybe a 10, 15 minute match top. Lynn could get out there and do 20, 30 minutes against anybody and make them look great. He was what they called a carpenter. Well, he ran on top for a while, quite a while, was expecting better pay because he's, you know, the champ and all this shit. And he was fairly, you know, he's like 22. He said the wrong thing to fucking um, Bill Watts and he ended up leaving. And sometime after that, they ended up doing the uh, Dirty White Boy gimmick. Like, they're supposed to be bikers. You look back on it now, it looks like two, you know, bears are going to a gay leather club. It was him and Tony Anthony. Uh, ended up, he, he kind of bounced around a little bit here and there, here and there. Ended up getting really lucky when Rip Oliver left uh, Portland, Don Owens group, to go to WWF at the time. Rip Oliver was not there for long. He was like, what, Super Ninja or some shit like this? Lynn got called in, went up there, and was booking and was ended up being like their top draw because they were kind of low on like name talent and he had probably the best run of his career and he ended up taking a territory that had kind of fallen it was still doing okay it was profitable but like really bumped everything up and kind of ended his career up there really really good book i mean there's all kinds of great stories there's, you know there's junkyard dog on the cover this is one of those, I'm pretty sure this is one of those Amazon print-on-demands. I'll find out in a second. Let's see. 2014, here we go. To many fans, he was a dominant champion. To others, he remains a complete unknown. This is a true story of pro wrestling's overlooked legend. Grappler details the extraordinary journey of Lynn Denton, a record-setting champion in several, ter in several legendary promotions. Denton worked alongside the biggest stars of the 80s. Hall of Famers, Roddy Roddy Piper, or Ric Flair, Hall of Rush. Yeah, he, oh, there's a great story. I'm sorry, I forgot this story. Give me two seconds. Sorry, I had a message there. Ric Flair story. He was assigned to drive Ric Flair around when he was in Crockett, I'm pretty sure. Well, one night they're coming out of, like, they're on, they get an argument with some guys. They're doing a base show, and they want to fight the Grappler and Flair. They'll meet us outside the base. 
to get out barrel outside the base and like two or three limbs tires low because he's got an old Ford. Oh, they're making fun of Flair because Flair's on my own limousine riding Jeff Lano shit. And Lynn was driving four LA around in a Ford LTD with four bear tires. The tires blow. The guys come out like throw beer at him and all this shit. <laughs> it is fucking great. Oh, man. There's just so many great fucking stories in this. Uh, Harley Race. Yeah, he worked with Harley for a long time and actually uh, booked St. Louis for all me. Lynn went everywhere. Just some of the men that played pivotal roles in Den's career. In addition, the grappler batter, Andre Jonathan, Ultimore, Bret Hart, and countless others, and Reno Archons. He even helped Jake Snake Roberts invent the DDT by accident. Yeah, Jake had him in like a, you know, a front headlock and slipped and they both fell and boom, DDT. From Den's humble debut in the Texas Dance Hall to the bright lights of Monday Night Wars, grappler guide readers, 35 years of pro wrestling history, prepared to enjoy the unique perspective of an unsung hero that was hated by the fans and celebrated by his peers. This is a story that can only be told a madman in a mask. Modern fans, if you did not grow up in the Territory days, he did wrestle Slim Denton on Mass in Nit on WCW Nitro a couple of times. He's one of the guys that Goldberg squashed. But, oh man, and if it's still on YouTube, I'm trying to remember, look for the West Coast Wrestling Connection. He had some kind of, he worked with them for a long time after Don Owens' group went under. They had a bunch of great shows, and Lynn is still amazing. I think he's still training people as of then. But, I'm going to get out of here. you got to check this book out, everybody. This book is just... It's worth whatever. It was like, eh, 20 bucks probably. It's one of those. I'm pretty sure it's a print on demand. Let me see. Yeah, it's a print on demand. 230 something pages. It is fucking amazing. Even if you've never heard of Linden. Man, all I really knew was, okay, the graph. I remember from Mid South. And that was about it. I started reading this going, oh man, I found out so much about territories. Like, I don't know shit about St. Louis. I don't know shit about Portland. I learned so much from this. Well, talk to everybody later. Hope you enjoyed that. Got another one coming up soon. Wait till y'all see what this book is. Latest.